So today we are going to be installing our solar system on our sprinter van conversion. And we're going to start off with these two 100 watt panels for a total of 200 watts of solar power. And these are flexible monocrystalline panels. And here's our batteries. We went with two AGM 12 volt batteries that we got from Rural King, our local like farm store. These are marine type batteries and they can be stored inside because they don't have acid as the AGM stands for absorbed glass mat. All right, so we've mounted our inverter and our charge controller right behind the driver's seat on the wall here. And it's a 1500 watt inverter. A little bit more information about the battery. Here's the part number on the top. And since they are 12 volt, they'll be hooked in parallel. Batteries are probably one of the most expensive parts in the solar system and most important part. I think these were about $140 each. We are going to put them under the seat next to the wall. We're going to take out the seat and show you where they go. Let me tell you about it. Okay, we have uh, both of our batteries hooked up in parallel, and then we have heavy uh, um, the blot wire going to our inverter. We have power coming from our inverter going back into our, our uh, outlets back here. We have our charge controller hooked up to the battery. And we also have, it's this wire here, and then this wire is a direct line from the batteries back to our refrigerator and our water pump. Okay, um, to mount these batteries, we put a just a small piece of glue on in between the two, just to keep them from rubbing up against each other, give them a little cushion there. We have these metal... Um, extrusions here that we're going to use for um, to secure it so it can't come this way. We have one on the other side. Those will get screwed down. This one through metal, the other one into the floor. We have these two little metal uh, brackets here and we're drilling holes through the floor all the way through the floor. And These will be through bolted so there's no way that this can uh, pull the screws out of the floor or, or rip it up out of the metal. So they'll be bolted with the bolts and nuts on the end underneath. And then we have a, a ratcheting strap that we're going to hook on. Uh, the reason why we have the, the reason why we have these little wooden pads underneath on each side is so that the ratchet strap, once it's in the hole, will lay flat on the battery. It was wanting to ride like this, which would end up wearing a hole in the battery. So. Uh, we've got it spaced where we'll be able to hook the ends on there. We'll cut the excess off the strap and ratchet it down good and tight so it won't be able to move forward or back, side to side, and the batteries will be secured. And you want to keep in mind that just making sure that they won't move is really not good enough. They have to be secured so that if you're in a, a minor accident, that it's not going to shake the batteries loose. This is our 110 volt outlet and it actually has a uh, voltage coming from our power inverter. This is our one outlet up here. This is 12 volts directly from the battery. This runs our refrigerator. You can hear it coming on and the other switch is for the water pump uh, so that it's not sitting under pressure all the time. And then these are actually uh, switching 12 volts. Uh, they're hooked up to the uh, the lights above and um, the power supplies for them are plugged into a power strip which is secured under here and uh, we've just uh, replaced the little switches they come with uh, they come with these little switches here 
and we've just cut those out and replaced them with uh, household switches and um, so that we have switches going to all the different lights in different areas. Here's looking down through our sink hole, where our bowl is going to be, and you can see the wires are zip tied along the edge. All right, now we're going to move up to the roof and mount the panels up here. We're going to use uh, RTV silicone, 100% silicone, in these holes. We're going to put a dab in each hole because this is where we're going to put some screws. And uh, just to make sure that these things don't go flying off in the wind when a big truck goes by or something. Uh, for hardware, we're using, uh, this is about a number 12 metal screw with a little lock washer and a, a flat washer. These are actually repurposed from the uh, cargo divider that we removed from the van. And this is what we're going to use to screw through the roof, through the silicone so we don't get any leaks. Okay. These little uh, hold downs to hold the wires in place. They've got a little adhesive tape on the back, so we clean it off with alcohol real good and stick those on. And then we'll zip tie the other wires to them uh, to hold the, all these in. And then this is our 12 gauge wire that we're going to splice uh, these panels into to bring it down to uh, the charge controller. And so we don't have the the proper wires to attach to these so we're going to splice all these into this 12 gauge copper to go down. Alright so we're splicing the uh, the panels we're hooking this up in parallel so we have uh, both the positives running into this connector over here 
and then we're going to put this heat shrink on there and shrink that down so that's nice and, and sealed weather tight and we're doing the same thing here with the negative and then we'll take both of those positive and negative down inside to our charge controller All right, we have everything hooked up and we are going to probably put a rubber mat over the batteries so nothing will fall on them and accidentally short them out. You see there we're at 12.6 volts. All right, to uh, recap this system, we have our power coming down from the solar panels, our 200 watt panels. And that goes into the bottom of our charge controller here. And then coming out of the charge controller, going to the battery is this circuit here. These are all 12 gauge wires. Going to our batteries down below. Uh, from the batteries, we have double lot wire coming to the bottom of our inverter. And then we have uh, one circuit from the inverter going back to our kitchen pedestal where we're breaking that current down in for our LED lights and for our 110 volt receptacles. And here we have added in our system um, a way to charge our solar batteries from the alternator on the van. And there are a couple of ways to go about this. What we've done is we have added a double lot wire from our positive post on the batteries here, our solar batteries, to the positive post on the van. And then we've added a switch in the ground circuit. So we have a double lot wire from our ground on the batteries through the switch to the frame of the van. And when we flip this switch on, the batteries back here are hooked up parallel with the battery in the van and so it ties the two systems together so if we've had extended cloudy periods and we're going to be driving the van we can flip the switch and the van alternator will charge the batteries and they'll be ready again for use so right now our batteries are at 12.9 volts and there isn't any sun out the sun is already down so there's nothing coming into the batteries to charge them so we're going to flip the switch and see what happens. 14.2. Wow, that went up fast. It jumped it right now. The alt next, that's the alternator is, is putting that much into all three batteries. This thing's got like 110 in the ball. All right. So yeah, we went from 12.9 to 14.2 instantly with the van running and flipping that switch. Uh, that's definitely a great alternative to charging your batteries quickly if there isn't much sun out. Alright, so we are all done installing the solar on the top of our Sprinter van conversion. And this is kind of just a beginner solar system, a 200 watts, and uh, it should be enough to charge the things that we need, run lights, and a small fridge. And always don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check us out on Patreon now.